because I am convinced. I, my life, I believe, is based on hope. My life continues because of hope. It is sustained because of hope. And so I'm, I'm you know, there's fire going on within me for this message this morning because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe that hope is going to unlock things in all of our lives. I believe hope is going to sustain us through some of our darkest hours. So if you would like to turn with me to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40. And we're going to read just one verse. There is plenty more scripture in this message, don't worry, but we're going to start with one verse. Um, I have the NIV version, but whatever one you want is going to work. So Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for such a beautiful morning. Lord, I thank you for delicious pancakes and fruit. And I thank you for the people who prepared it and served it. Lord, I pray that you bless them and their families this week. Lord, I thank you for the hope that you give us. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you unpack it and you draw us through some of our darkest times. And Lord, I thank you that you sustain us, that you undergird us, that you lift us up, you nourish us and you nurture us. Lord, I just pray that today, this word, this message, Lord God, Father, I pray that it will be clear. Lord God, I pray that our ears will hear it and that it will sink into our hearts, Lord, that it will become the burning conviction that we live by. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be in this place. Lord, Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll be doing your work and do the things that only you can do. Father, as I speak, Lord, I pray that I am clear. Lord, Father, I pray that each one of us will be able to understand your word, to be able to comprehend it and be able to apply it to our lives. And Lord, as I speak this word, Lord, I pray that you will be speaking your words, Lord, and that they will work together. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, um, just turn to the person beside you and can you tell them if you were an animal, what would you be? So just the person beside you, if you were going to be any animal, any animal, what would it be? Excellent. Okay, cool. All righty, all righty. I'm sure we have a whole zoo in here if we were all animals. Fantastic, okay. Now, animals are used for many different things. We, we just heard about the hockey team. They're called the kookaburras, the, males hockey, the Australian men's hockey team. Our soccer team is the Socceroos. Now, Australia has two animals that they use to represent who we are as a nation. One is an emu and one is a kangaroo. And although they are both native to Australia, and that is part of the reason why they they were selected as our national um, animals, um, there's also another character trait that they both possess. Neither one of them can walk backwards. Both of them can only walk forwards. And I think that is such a powerful image, particularly to be um, declared over our nation that we will be moving forward, that we will not be walking backwards anytime soon, that we're, our eyes are fixed on the future. Yeah. Animals are used to represent a lot of things. And in the Bible, in the Word of God, animals are used as metaphors for lots of different character traits. In our passage this morning, Isaiah The eagle is used as an animal. It is used as a metaphor for those who hope in the Lord. And today I want to explore that a little bit further. And I want to use the eagle as an example of what happens when we put our hope in God. But what is hope? We hear, we hear the scripture, and these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And we hear a lot about love, because the greatest of all of those is love. And we hear a lot about faith, but hope is like this uh, mysterious kind of 
um, nebulous idea. It's like, it's not quite concrete. What, what is this hope? You know, it's like getting our hopes up. It's kind of like this wishful thinking sometimes. We're like, what is hope? You know, I have faith. Faith is stronger. We, have, we kind of have that feeling that faith's the better one, but I believe hope is just as powerful as faith. I believe hope is just as relevant as love because hope is the strong, confident expectation that God will fulfill his promises to us. Hope is a strong, confident expectation. Hope fixes our eyes on the future. If we read Romans 8, 24 to 25, it says, For in this hope we were saved. In this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. For who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Hope fixes our eyes on the future. Did you know that an eagle can focus its vision on something five kilometers away? Five kilometers. Sometimes I struggle to see street signs 100 meters away. But an eagle can focus its vision on five kilometers away. Hope fixes our eyes on what is ahead of us. Hope fixes our eyes on what is set in the future. And not only do we see these promises, but we wait for them patiently. Right now, if you'd want to close your eyes with me, I want you to envision. I believe that each one of us has received a promise from God. It could, it could have been from a scripture that you have read. It could be a prophetic word that was spoken over your life, a vision that you've received, a picture. It could be something, but each one of us has a promise from God. I want you, want you in your mind to bring that to your recollection. I want you to focus your mind on that promise. It could be healing. It could be restoration. It could be a promise down the road of a relationship. It could be um, that family member coming back in. It could be a job. It could be a whole manner of things. It could be financial security. But I want you to bring that into your mind and I want you to focus on that promise. Now, the thing with hope is it's the promise that hasn't yet come to pass. So I want, I want you to make sure that this promise that you have in your mind right now, it hasn't been, it hasn't been fulfilled yet. Now, it could, you could have received it last week or you could have received it a decade ago. I don't mind. But I want you to have that promise in your mind while we go through the rest of the message. Hope fixes our eyes on the future and hope is not disappointed. Romans 5.5, 5, and hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, it is in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, this is the message of salvation, found yourselves home free, signed, sealed, delivered, by the Holy Spirit. This signet from God, Holy Spirit, the signet from God is the first installment on what is coming. He is a reminder that we will get everything God has planned for us, a praising and glorious life. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is our guarantee that God will fulfill the word that he has spoken to us. He is the guarantee of our salvation. He is the one that will remind us. It's like you get a stamp on your arm and it reminds you of something. You tie a string around your finger to remind you of something that you don't want to forget. Holy Spirit is that reminder. He's the little voice inside that calls those promises out into your recollection, into your conscious thought again. I believe he's the one that brings, you know, repetitive pictures back up. He's like Noah's rainbow. God gave Noah a rainbow and that was to be a promise. It was to signify the promise that never again would he annihilate, annihilate mankind and flood the earth. He would never do that again. And the rainbow is the promise. That's the picture. I believe Holy Spirit is the one that brings the rainbows back to us. He's the one that shows us, oh, that's right. No, I believe that promise. He's the one that keeps bringing it back in front of us. Psalm 145, 13 to 14. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. 
The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises. All right, I want you to repeat this after me. The Lord is trustworthy. The Lord is trustworthy. In all his promises. In all his promises. And faithful in all he does. And faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Hope does not disappoint. When God gives us a promise, when we put our strong, confident expectation in that promise, when we place our hope in God and his ability to do the things that he said that he was going to do, it does not disappoint. Hope will not fail us. It will bring us through. Hope fixes our eyes on the future. It places, it places the thing that's right there, that promise of God that's somewhere out there in the future. You may not know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. It doesn't disappoint you. And hope also inspires endurance. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, verse 3. We remember before our God and our Father your work produced by faith, your labor pr- prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in a storm, most creatures, they go try and hide and find shelter from the storm. They'll go hide in a burrow or a cave. They'll try and find shelter in branches or nests. They try, they try and get away from the storm and they just wait and they sit it out until the storm is over. The eagle, however, is different. The eagle does not hide from the storm. The eagle flies out into the storm. You see, the eagle uses the storm. The eagle's performance and its flight is enhanced by the storm. The storm has thermal wind patterns that are strong enough to lift up the eagle. It uses the eagle to rise above the storm and to fly over it. The strength of those wind patterns accelerates the eagle's flight through the storm. The eagle does not need to hide from a storm. The eagle accelerates and elevates above and through the storm. Hope does not promise that there will be no problems in life. It doesn't guarantee fine conditions. It actually expects the opposite. But what hope does is when we put our hope in God and we stretch out our wings, we trust that God and his spirit will undergird us. When we're talking about sustaining, it will lift us up. Sustaining is also that nurturing and nourishing as well. It accelerates and elevates us up, over and through the storm. The Bible says that take heart, you know, there will be trouble in this life. There will be trouble. The Bible says so. But take heart because Jesus Christ has overcome the world. When we have that promise, remember that promise that we just thought about just before? We have this promise. It is not the end when we come up against storms and difficult situations in our lives. And that is not the time that we should run and hide and cower and just see if we can just wait this out. Storms, difficult circumstances, tragedies, trauma are opportunities which God would like to elevate us and accelerate us up, over and through to the other side. Because our eyes are fixed on that which is on the other side. If you have received that promise, you're holding on to that promise, it, has not come, it hasn't come about yet. I want to tell you, right now is not the end. This is not the end. This is, because you're going through a difficult circumstance does not disqualify the promise that God has given to us. It doesn't disqualify it. It strengthens us to accelerate towards that promise. Hope inspires us to endure. It's what makes us go the distance. It's what gets us up in the morning. It's what gets us out of bed. 
And sometimes that's the only thing we have. When everything else is falling apart, when there is the tornado and the hurricanes in our lives, hope is the thing that we fix our eyes on. We know that the word of God has told us, and God does not lie, that he will not, he will not disappoint us. He will fulfill the promises. He is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The word of God told me that. So I will endure. Not only will I just weather it, but I will accelerate through it and I will elevate over it. So that is hope. Hope is a strong, confident expectation that God is going to fulfill his promises, fixes our eyes on the future. It does not disappoint us and it inspires us to endure. But how on earth do we get it? How, how do you get this hope? Tess, that sounds fantastic, but how do I lay my hands on that? Do you have a bottle of that out the back? Well, I want to tell you a couple of things on how we get hope. First one is from Scripture. Romans 15, verse 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught by Scripture, the Word of God, and the encouragement that it provides, we may have hope. The Bible is full of God's promises to us. You may not have received a prophetic word or seen a vision or any of those things, but the Bible is full of God's promises of his faithfulness to you. It is full of promises to his people and not just the promises, but actually his fulfillment of those promises. Last time I was speaking with you was Mother's Day and we talked about Sarah and God had promised Sarah she would have a son. He promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a son. And the word of God not only tells us about that promise, but also follows the story through and shows us God's fulfillment of that promise. There is the testimony of his faithfulness in keeping promises. That's the second way that we can receive hope is through testimony. Psalm 105 uh, verses 2 to 5. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth will be renewed like the eagle's. Testimony is what God has done in other people's lives when we hear it. It's about his healing, his redemption, his love, his compassion, his goodness. Testimony is a way that God says to us, look what I can do. Look what I have done. And I can do this for you. A number of years ago, Elise lost a really precious ring. I couldn't find it anywhere. And so she prayed and God gave her a picture of the vegetable crisper in the fridge. And you're thinking, why would you have a picture of a vegetable crisper in the fridge? But Elise, she goes, okay, well, I'm going to have a look. She opens up the vegetable crisper. Where do you think she found her ring? In the vegetable crisper. So that's pretty cool, huh? Well, a few years later, um, I received a, an heirloom bracelet um, from a, an estate from Holland. One of our relatives passed away and she gave a number of pieces of jewellery. And so I received this bracelet, um, which I loved and I cherished, and I lost. Um, I thought I'd lost it in Sydney. I'd taken it away to one of the Hillsong conferences and I thought I'd lost it there. And I'm like, oh no, this is a family piece. People, you know, have a sentimental investment in this piece. I'm like, God, seriously. And what came to mind was my sister finding the bracelet in the vegetable crisper, the ring in the vegetable crisper. And I'm thinking, okay. I didn't go check the vegetable crisper. <laughs> But I was like, okay, God, you can, you can, you know, help Elise find her ring in a vegetable crisper. You need to help me find this bracelet. I believe that you can do this kind of stuff, this crazy stuff. So please, I need to find this bracelet. Anyway, a couple of months later, I was looking through my jewelry drawer for another piece of jewelry. 
and I was opening up boxes and boxes and boxes, and I had already checked through all of my jewellery already looking for this bracelet. Um, so I opened up a little box, and guess what I found? My bracelet. My heirloom bracelet from my auntie that meant so much to me in a place that I would never have thought it would, because I'd already checked there. It wasn't there. I knew it wasn't there. But God brought something back to me. God can use what he does in other people's lives to prompt us, to build up a hope within us, to build up faith within us that he can do these things, these crazy things, these unexpected things. He can use other, the testimonies from other people's lives. He also uses prophetic messages. Samuel, the prophet Samuel, went to Jesse's house and lined up all the sons, and he picked David. And he says, you're going to be the next king of Israel. Little David, kid, just tending some sheep. Now, did David become king right then and there? No. There were a number of years between when he received that promise to when he actually became king. And those years weren't easy years either. There were a lot of years where he was running for his life, where the king at the time was hunting him. But he, hold, he held on to the hope. Prophetic words can be something that we can grab hold of. Grab a hold of. And they may not happen straight away. I have a prophetic word that I've been holding on to for 11 years. It hasn't happened yet. And that's okay. I'm not um, saintly like Leslie, and I am impatient. That is, a, that is a very common feeling for me to feel, is impatient. But I believe, and I hold on to the hope. I see that promise in the future. I know that God is faithful, and he will not disappoint me. And I have had to endure a lot of years and a lot of impatience, but I believe that God is going to fulfill what he said that he would do for us. We can receive our hope through scripture, the word of God, through testimony, what God has done in other people's lives, and through prophetic words. And those are just some. I'm sure that you could receive hope from other sources as well. But how do we keep hope? So we know what hope is. It's this strong, confident expectation. That's fantastic. I know where I'm going to get it from. But how do I hold on to it? Because sometimes it feels like it's quickstand through our fingers. It just kind of sieves away, particularly in the face of adversity and the tough situations. Migratory birds fly in a V formation, like so. And they fly in this formation for a particular reason, not because it looks cool in the sky though it does. They fly in that formation because when they fly in that formation, their efficiency in flight increases. When they fly in formation, their efficiency in flight increases by 70%. Each bird flies slightly behind the other, and what happens is the airflow over the top of the bird in front actually creates an uplift and actually helps support the bird, sustaining it, undergirds that bird. And so each one is flying on the upwash of the bird in front. Now, the bird who's right at the tip of the V and the birds that are right at the end of the V, they tire a whole lot quicker than the other ones that are flying within the formation. And so they rotate regularly so that each one gets a rest and each one holds the burden and takes the brunt and takes their turn so that all of them can get to their destination. Sometimes we have those long distances between when we receive the promise and when it's actually fulfilled. Hebrews 10, 23 to 25 says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. 
Flying in formation increases our flight range and conserves our energy. And when we journey together, we can go the distance. Making sure that we have people around us, people full of hope, People who believe the promises that God has spoken to each one of us. Making sure we have them around us. And when we're flying and we're doing that journey, sometimes it's really hard and you are the one at the front. But when you have other people flying in formation around you, you get to rotate. You get to share the burden. They, when you get tired and you're like, I'm not sure if I can keep going. Someone else, one of your friends one of your congregation family members will step in and go, you know what, I'm going to carry this for a little while. I'm going to take the brunt. I'm going to fly at the front and I'm going to champion your cause because I believe in the promise. I believe I am hopeful. I am one who believes in hope. I have a strong, confident expectation that God is going to fulfill his promises in your life. I'm going to do that for you. And when they get tired, the next guy comes around and says, you know what, I'm believing and I've got the strength and I have the energy and I'm going to do this for you. And we do this journey together. No man is an island. We were created for community. We were created to fly together, to endure together, to spur one, one another on, to love and good deeds because of the hope that we have, because we believe in the promises of God. Hope is a journey that is best traveled with fellow eagles. Hope is a journey best traveled with fellow believers. And when we're trying to do it on our own, we get really tired. And people crash and burn because they've tried to do this journey on their own, by themselves. We need to get people around us. We need to get hope-filled, believing people around us. And we need to share those deep down desires, those promises that God has spoken to us, even the ones that sound crazy. Because everything around us looks like it ain't going to happen. We need to share those. We need to speak those out so that people can start believing with us. And we get to go the distance. If I could have the worship team back up, that would be amazing. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. The sustaining power of God, I believe, is held in the essence of hope to go through those dark times to go through the valley of the shadow of death valleys of dry bones where everything seems lifeless and it looks like there could be no possibility of that promise coming true hope is what takes us through hope fixes our eyes on the other side hope inspires us to endure And it will not disappoint us when our hope is fixed in Jesus Christ. He is faithful in all he does. He is trustworthy in all of his promises. So right now, if you want to close your eyes with me, I want you to bring that promise back to your mind. That promise that seems just ridiculous to believe in right now. It's absurd but it just burns within your heart. You are constantly reminded of that promise. Holy Spirit seems to keep throwing stuff in your path that just keeps bringing it back. He's getting your attention. He's inspiring endurance in you. Holy Spirit, right now, I just ask that you will work in people's hearts, Lord. Father, that healing, that restoration, that provision. God, that dream, that desire, that passion. Holy Spirit, I pray that you reignite that flame. And God, I pray in the face of adversity, in the face of the storms, the hurricanes, the cyclones of our lives that we find ourselves in, 
God, when we fear. Holy Spirit, I pray we will see the promise on the other side and God, lift us up. God, as we raise our wings, as we raise our hands to you, Lord, that you will undergird us. You will lift us up, that you will elevate us and accelerate us through to the other side. I declare that the promise that you are holding on to right now, you will, you will not end. This life will not end until you see that fulfilled. I'm believing that people will start to see these promises fulfilled in the next weeks and months. This year will be a year of fulfilled promises, of hope that is satisfied. And there will be testimonies from this year, testimonies of God's goodness and his faithfulness, of his trustworthiness, that this auditorium will be full of people sharing their hope and sharing the journey together. I thank you, Lord, that you are mighty, that in the face of the impossible, you make things happen. You are the God of impossible. God, I pray, I comfort the hearts of those, Lord, who feel like their hopes have been disappointed, who feel hopeless. Lord God, lift up their heads. Let them see. Renew their strength, Lord God, that they may run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. For you are good, God. You are mighty, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.